everyone, and welcome to our fourth episode of Bend at Night, a brand new digital series where we dive into the minds of the devs here at Bend Studio to celebrate 30 years of making games. Tonight's episode is on programming. Hey, Laura and Sam, thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's a pleasure to have you. So we're going to begin with some questions, as we do with every episode. Laura, let's start off with you. What is a programmer? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Way to start it off. Basically, someone who codes in a language of their choosing, like, for example, C++, um, could be anything, but, yeah, they code. What Is that a good coding? answer? <laughs> what kind of coding do you do? I do primarily gameplay coding for games. Usually anything that, like, you see the player doing when you're playing a game, like, moving or interacting with an object, I do the coding behind like systems similar to those. Sam, now what is a tools programmer? Programmers or gameplay programmers are doing what you see on screen. A tools programmer is doing everything you don't see on screen. So behind the scenes yeah. ninja. It, yeah, behind the scenes ninja, yeah. It's, it's, it's making the tools and software that other members of the team are gonna use to make the game. So I help I help people make the game, I guess is a way you could qualify that. He does the scary programming. I do the scary yeah. programming? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, the tools programming is definitely not flashy. It's a, a lot of time, we have a, a, a joke, uh, myself and the people who sit around me, um, that if, uh, all right, cool, we got, a new, we got a new tools update. Everything works the same. You won't see any differences. And like that's the, that's like the the best update you could ever do is like nothing's changed. It just works better behind the scenes. Where when Laura makes something cool, it's like, "Hey, check out this new thing we can do." And you can make a cool video about it and it's all flashy and pretty and everyone's like, "Yeah." <laughs> I feel like you're sounding a little salty over there. <laughs> it's, a, it's just a little bit. It's a little bit. But I think that's what's good. I think that's what's good for like our players to kind of to hear that, you know, you always have like the game directors out in the public, creative directors, you know, program where you can see these things, right? But there's so much that happens behind the scenes that's not seen. But if it wasn't for those roles, there'd be no games out. There'd be nothing, yeah. Games have gotten so complicated to make now they're everyone's hyper specialized so to speak to have like this amount of knowledge to make a good game you need to have people who spend you know spend their time learning how to design a game so it's fun you need these people who who spend all their time learning how to optimize the game so it runs well they work really closely together but they're almost entirely separate disciplines of coding what first inspired you to want to become a game programmer? What made you want to get into this industry and that's what you wanted to do? I think for me, I grew up um, playing a lot of World of Warcraft with my dad and Half-Life with my dad and my brother. So I loved games at an early age. And then my one cousin was like, I don't, don't know what engine they were using or anything, but they were making little games where they'd put like my brother's face on the character or something. And I was like, that's so cool. So I just like started chatting with them a lot, like being like, I kind of want to make games too. And I remember them being like, do you like geometry in school? And I was like, no. <laughs> and they're like, you should not do this then. And I was like, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, but they inspired me because they were like super, super smart. So. Um, I just wanted to be like them, and then liking games also helped. The idea of you as a game programmer at one point in your life not liking geometry <laughs> well, is hilarious to can me. Can I say something awful? Um, when I went to my open house for the college I went to, there was uh, one group going towards game design and one group going towards game programming, and my family and I were so confused. It was so chaotic. And we just chose a random group, and it was the programming group. And I was like, this was my major now. Destiny uh, called. Yeah, and, and I liked it, so I didn't, you can always switch to the major. I, I didn't, so I liked it, but I was very like, okay, we're doing it. Some parallel universe, you're, a, you're design <laughs> at some studio. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I quite like design too, but I, I don't think I would be a good designer. I, I like the coding for sure. How about you, Sam? What inspired you? become a programmer oh man I just loved video games it's the coolest thing the idea of 
being a part of something that other people are going to enjoy, that other people will smile about, you know, for Days Gone, right? Uh, my friends, they would play Days Gone and then they would message me and like, oh man, it was so cool when da 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 And they would be like texting me updates of where they were in the story and they're like, oh my gosh, he did this and she did that. And it it was everything I ever thought it would be. It was It was so much fun to have people who were passionate about something that I had put you know, years of my life into. It's just the greatest feeling in the world. What are your day-to-day -day responsibilities? Usually for me, I have a lot of stand-up meetings where I go and say what I'm working on, um, but it's often a lot of chatting with designers um, because, for example, a designer may want some system for the player, like I want the player to be able to do this or I want this to be a new mechanic and then a day-to-day -day for me would be implementing that, messaging them and asking more questions, clarification, um, just kind of having a constant communication with the designer, sometimes an artist I'll be chatting with for like animation. It's also a lot of bug fixing um, as a programmer. Um, usually like you could spend a few days on a bug, you could spend a few hours, um, but usually I'll have like a backlog of bugs and if I'm not working on something major important, then I'll go through that list and say, oh, this little thing is broken, let me fix that. What are you saying? What are you, what are you day to day here? Yeah, day to day, is it on fire? Is anything on fire, right? <laughs> that's the first thing, that's the first thing I usually do when I come in in the morning is, is everything working the way it's supposed to? And then from there it's, okay, has anyone reported that there's a problem? Those are like the bug fixes. It's a little different between tools and gameplay programming where like your bugs will come from uh, QA playing the game and being like, hey, this doesn't work the way it's supposed to. Whereas most of my bugs actually come from the team creating the game rather than the team playing the game. So it's this tool doesn't work like this or when I'd like the tool to be able to do this. It's, it's checking in with different people. Um, but yeah, it's pretty similar. Do you have bugs? Is everything working the way it's supposed to? If so, start implementing new things. What do you believe is the number one trait to be successful as a game programmer? The willingness to learn. Um, you'll come into a game studio or any studio, any programming job, I think, and um, it's not really what you know. And that's what you know can, can get you in the door, but what you learn is what keeps you here. Um, we're always learning new things. I'm always learning something new. You know, we're always coming up with new ways to do something. Uh, so um, the ability to learn is crazy important uh, for programming, I think. I would agree with that. And patience, I guess, goes along with it because it, like learning takes patience and some of those things are just so confusing. And you have to give yourself grace and be like, this might take me a while, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad programmer. It just might take me a while. And, you know, patience when fixing a bug, that's super hard. Sometimes you need to like get up and go for a walk and come back to it. You shouldn't like beat yourself up until something's done. Sometimes you really just need to be able to either ask for help and not feel embarrassed to ask for help and take your time with things. What is one misconception that you believe uh, players may have about programmers? Um. So, <laughs> it's not as big a deal as you think to be better at the video game than the dev. There's a lot of talk about that. Yeah. If you're better than QA, that's, that's a mark for you, because yeah. they're playing the game constantly. But to be perfectly honest, I don't know about you, or we, I don't play the game often. I couldn't be a Days Gone Horde, and I've tried so yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm so bad yeah, at it. Yeah. Devs don't have to be good at video games. You don't have to be able to, I guess, you don't have to be skillful at video games in order to design a good one. What advice do you have for future programmers looking to get into the industry? What type of, what type of code should they be learning? C++ for sure. It's always good. Then I would always recommend the Unity engine. Um, or Unreal. I thought Unity was easier for me to learn. Um, however, that's C Sharp. Um, and Unreal is C++. So either of those, they're free and there's so much documentation online. So just looking into those and 
making your own, you can follow tutorials to make games that are already done, show you how, like just to see what, if you like the process. Um, and then you can start making your own personal projects. It's not necessarily, in my opinion, this is the language you should learn. Do you want to get in the game domain? Learn this. I think it's a lot more important to just learn the concepts of programming, the best practices of programming, uh, patterns and how to solve different problems. Uh, because what you'll find is everyone looks up how to do something in the language that they're currently work working in. So knowing exactly how to, you know, oh, how do I how do I define an array in this obscure language that I happen to be working on isn't important for you to be able to recall quickly. What's important is to be able to look at the problem and go, oh, I need an array for this. Because then, uh, Google's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, you know, you know, everyone looks stuff up, everyone, but if you don't know what to look for, then it doesn't matter how much you Google. If you don't know how you're going to solve the problem. True. Yeah. And like, I mean, every language is different, but you can kind of just start reading pseudocode and reading other languages, even if you don't know how to write it, and just you can still learn to understand what they're doing, even if you don't write in it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of languages. Uh, Python is probably the example people would be most familiar with that are English. I could, I could, you know, we could write a couple lines of Python code and I could hand it to someone who's never coded before and I'd be fairly confident that they could work out what's happening there, even, even without programming knowledge. And so starting with those kind of more English-like languages is a great way to get an intro into it. Thank you both for joining me tonight. It was great. I learned a lot about programming, something when I look at your monitors, I have no idea what you're looking at. <laughs> Sometimes I don't either. <laughs> but seriously, thank you, thank you. It's like the Hulk, that's the secret cap I never know. <laughs> <laughs> and that wraps up another episode of Bend at Night. Let us know what you think on social media by using hashtag Ben30. You can find us at Ben Studio on your favorite social channels, including Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. We hope to see you next time when we bring on two more devs, this time from animation. We'll see you soon. Ben Studio out.